This is the brand new Lenovo ThinkBook Plus Gen 6. I know, terrible long name, but it has one special power. Its screen can get erect. Like, imagine having that superpower in real life on demand whenever you want. But look, it's pretty cool. Like, I like this idea. And being able to go from a 14 inch display to something big like this, 16 inches, is very handy because you can travel with a bigger display in a more compact form of a laptop. But there's one problem with this entire setup. It's ridiculously expensive, like over $3,000 for this laptop. I think maybe in the future as the technology matures and prices come down, then I could be more excited about it. But spending over $3,000 for a display that gets erect is a little bit expensive right now. But look, it does look like your typical Lenovo laptop. You have the branding of Lenovo in the middle. You have this two-tone finish on the top. It's fairly light. I'm not gonna say super light because it does weigh 3.72 pounds. And the reason why it's a bit heavier than other 14-inch laptops is because of the display. Like they have to make it thicker so that when it rolls into the laptop, there's a place for it. So it kind of hides underneath the keyboard. There's not a lot of ports on this, which is kind of unfortunate. Like there's nothing on the right hand side except for the power button. And then on the left hand side, all you have is two Thunderbolt 4 ports. It's not the worst thing in the world, but I wish there was more. And then of course there's your combo audio jack. Also holding this laptop, not the most comfortable. Like the edges are not rounded off. It's very sharp. It's very angled. It's, it's not like a very refined, product like the Yoga 9i for example. Also, when you open it up, not too easy with one hand. Like you have to use two hands to open this up. And I think they did that for one good reason, is to add a little bit of weight on the bottom so that when you have the display going all the way up to 16.7 inches, the laptop doesn't fall backwards. But here's the cool thing about this display. Like when you press that button, it goes to 16.7 inches and you can see the hinge over here rolling, which I thought was really cool. And it's not perfect yet. Like if you've used a foldable phone, you're gonna see a crease on the laptop. The display itself is like uh, the same material you'd use, let's say on a Fold 7, for example. So it doesn't feel like proper plastic. In fact, this entire display is not even touch. And yes, there is a bit more reflection than your standard glass or glossy screen that we're used to. Also, when you're rolling and unrolling the display, it has to be in a 90 degree orientation or back. If it's closer than that, like let's say below 90, it won't go up or down. Like it, it, it'll just won't let you do it. It has to be 90 degrees then it'll automatically roll down or roll up. As for the keyboard, it's your typical Lenovo keyboard, right? It's, you know, it's a little bit of a chiclet keyboard, so it doesn't have the depth of, let's say, a pro laptop from Lenovo, but the keys do feel fine. They're very comfortable to type on. The arrow keys are, are good too, like they're pretty thick, but the touchpad is awesome. Like this is a haptic touchpad. So when you're using this, it's very close to using, let's say like a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro, way better than the mechanical touchpads that Lenovo currently offers. But I wanna go back to the display for one second because there's a lot of little fun things you can do with it. Like right off the bat, the color accuracy, the color gamut on this thing is exceptional. Like it's great for watching content on it, assuming you don't mind big, thick black bars because you know, videos at 16 by nine only take up the middle of the display. But if you're like watching anything, it just looks good on this display, but they've added some widgets into this. So when I have this thing fully unloaded and you can do this with the screen down as well, there's a little button over here, which is basically a widget button. And when you press it, it brings up the opportunity to kind of cycle between a few things. So right now I have it on Lenovo's virtual display. So this is literally giving me a second display. So if I load up, for example, uh, Microsoft Edge, right? And I wanna drag it to the second display, I can totally do that. I just go upwards, right? And then downwards if I wanna bring it back. Now, I don't think this is a must have feature because quite frankly, you can just snap icons or you can snap web browsers to the bottom and kind of arrange it like that. But if you like the idea of having a second display, you can totally do it. There's also a couple of other widgets. So like you have Microsoft Office integration, you have a smart copy option, which basically allows you to add things to the clipboard for later. 
And then of course you have a user center, which kind of gives you an idea of how to use this widget. And then of course there's your little widget center with your calendar to-do list and some reminders. But these bezels are thick, like they're thicker than my wife's mustache. Like that's how thick these bezels are, but like you kind of have to have them, right? Like there's a mechanism in here allowing the screen to get bigger and lower when you need to. And it has to be in this sort of casing for it to have a place to go when it's lowered all the way down. At least you still have a good webcam at the top. Obviously you can use Windows Hello Facial Recognition to log yourself in. And of course the webcam itself is 1080p. All right, so here's what the webcam looks like. Um, I'm just using natural light. I'm in the kitchen of my office. Uh, the blinds are down. It's not a super sunny day. So there's a natural diffusion happening right now. So it should look pretty good. 1080p again. And uh, yeah, let me know how the uh, microphone sound. But you know, I, I still think this needs a bit more time to mature because even when this is open, the display is a little wobbly. It's not bad, like it's not the worst wobble I've seen on a laptop, but it feels kind of loose. Like there's a lot of creaking and cracking happening to make this work. And as expected, again, this is a rollable display, but like when we talk about actual performance, like this is not gonna blow you away. This is an Intel Lunar Lake laptop. So even though this one comes with 32 gigabytes of RAM and the Intel Arc iGPU is pretty good and you have a good amount of storage, it's not gonna blow you away. But if you're someone who's like a hardcore Microsoft Office user, you're gonna like this idea because it has a vertical look that allows you to have a proper page in front of you or a couple of pages in front of you. And the resolution changes every time you open up that display. So when it's in 14 inch mode, you're looking at 2000 by 1600, which is about a five by four aspect ratio. And then as soon as you push the button to go 16.7 inches, then you're talking about a 2000 by 2350 aspect ratio, which is eight by nine. As for the sound, they come out of these two speakers on the bottom. There's just no place to place them on the deck and they hit the table, they're okay. Not the worst, but obviously not the best speakers I've listened to as well. Now this is definitely not a gaming laptop, especially with this aspect ratio. Like you're just gonna have black bars for the lot of the games that you are playing. And look, it's just not gonna run AAA titles very well. Like if it's an older title, you don't mind dropping the settings a little bit, you can totally do it. But again, it's just gonna have these weird black bars and it's not gonna give you the same gaming experience as a more traditional display would give you. Now this is a fairly quiet laptop, but you will hear the fans, especially if you leave it on performance mode. But if you're in class or if you're in an office setting and you don't want to hear them at all, just leave it on adaptive or battery saver. But I tested everything. Like I even tested the average core clock speeds. They're nice and high, exactly where they should be. This thing does very well in terms of temperatures when it's under full load, like the highest it usually tops out at is 80 degrees Celsius consistently. I had to take a look at the internals of this laptop and I was kind of pleased, you know, it looks very different than most other laptops on the market. And I mean, look, the motherboard is in this weird L shape, two tiny little fans. I'm sure there's copper heat pipes underneath here with a heat spreader on top. The NVMe SSD is a 2240. You can upgrade it for something bigger if you want, but there's no second slot if you want to expand your storage. Wi-Fi card is soldered onto the motherboard, but it is Wi-Fi 7. You have this giant, ribbon cable, which I assume is for the display to give it some slack when it's moving up and down. But the pulley system, you can see over here, right? Like you have the strings going around the pulley system and these obviously rotate when the monitor is expanding and detracting. But the battery is probably the most interesting piece because this is a square battery. Usually it's a rectangular one at the bottom portion of your laptop. And this takes up most of the space, a 66 watt hour battery. And I got over 13 hours of use. So not the best for Intel Lunar Lake, but still good enough to get you through the entire day. And this was with the laptop at 14 inches. Look, it's expensive. And I recommend most people don't buy it unless you have money to burn. Like there's some great use cases for this. Like if you love seeing documents, how they're supposed to be laid out, or if you're just some crazy maniac that wants to watch TikTok on a proper laptop display in a vertical format, you're gonna love this thing. But obviously $3,000 is a lot to ask when there's still some compromises for this sort of form factor. The display itself, as cool as it is and as beautiful as it is, still has creases. It still reflects because it's using foldable or rollable technology. The laptop itself is pretty premium, but you know, there's some creaks and cracks. Like for example, the display, doesn't go too far back. Like it kind of tops out right here, which is great for most use cases, but most other laptops can go back a tiny bit further. Also, I don't know how this hinge is gonna be in the next few years. Is this rollable display going to last into the future? I don't know. I still think it's very early, but I can't help walking away from feeling that this was just a really 
cool experience. And I cannot wait for this sort of technology to mature and come down in price and be incorporated into future laptops. Either way, that wraps up my review of the ThinkBook Plus Gen 6. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.